all you need is a blending board this one my husband made for me so i just use this pet brush that i got i've tried using a, some people use like a paint style brush but i found the bristles came out really easy and messed up a bat um yeah some fiber the first time i tried it, it i was picking out hairs the whole time um bristles and it drove me crazy i just got this brush from um just it was just a cheap one from the hardware shop and it's got brushes on side and it's got like a dog comb fine tooth carding fabric on the other side and uh, I rarely use that bit occasionally but very rare I just use the bristles and you can see the bristles are starting to get a bit I don't know if you can see because of the light but they're a bit worn at the top now but um, it's doing it's doing really well here is one example of how you can make a beautiful bat with just some random fibers on the blending board and it's got lots of sparkle That's another one I put these two in the bag together because I'll probably use these together in a project but you probably won't show up on camera very well they are full of pretty sparkle and another one it's a bit of a brighter rainbow one there Okay, I've got a bunch of fibre here that I put together. Just use the rustling of the bag um, before I went on holiday. Ignore the writing, that's what was in before. So I'm going to put this together in piles on my table here into different segments. I've got first over here, but I'll do it here first to show you of what I have in here. I'll just take these out of the bag. Okay, so I have some Angelina, and this one is like a green with a copper hologram type effect it looks green and then other lights it looks coppery and I have some bits and pieces I'm just going to separate the different fibers out and then I'll explain what I've got okay so what I've got here is I've got some my base fibers this is orange Corridale, I think, um, like a pumpkin orange, and I have like a turquoisey, almost bordering on aqua, but not quite turquoise merino. I have um, a minty aqua arena merino, and a little wee bit of a kind of a semi solid purple merino there. And for toppings, I have, I have to excuse the light, it's just I can't do much about it today. So I've got some apricot -y orange dyed um, uh, fire style, what do you call it? Yeah, fire style or trilobal nylon. I also have some violet dyed fire style. I have some aqua and green, some violet some kind of a corally pink and some undyed tussar silk these are silks and bamboos this is undyed tussar silk which has kind of got that golden creamy color i have some violet and some pinky orange and some turquoise uh, silk that's silk um and we've got neps but that silk should be with that. I've got neps and we've got neps, 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 and the Angelina. So what we're going to do is make a sandwich with all these different layers in. So I'm going to split each of these base fibers into three piles, like three sections of each of the fibers, and they will go in like a three layer sandwich. Some people do four, I think um frost John, she does four i just do three because they're mini bats and it doesn't really matter and then between each layer of these fibers we'll be putting toppings i might not use all the toppings um there might be some left over but we'll just see how we go first of all and you separate these into thirds what we're going to do is take a third of each of these and we're going to layer them on here and then we'll top with some toppings 
and then we'll do the same repeatedly for all three layers. And that's basically all there is to making your mini bat, depending upon the colour and the type of bat you want to make. For our example, if you want to make a gradient bat, you would literally just lay out your gradient on your blending board. If, like me, I like to do a double gradient on my blending board so that I can spin the whole bat and then wind it off into a centerfold ball and ply it back on itself and you'll get say you had say you had red orange yellow then you go yellow orange red when you came to ply you get those reds together orange and yellow but you're going to get some overlap where the the colors don't meet cleanly so you might get a lot of clean red at the beginning by the time you get to the center you might have very little yellow if any at all depending on how you've laid the fibre out on the blending board but also how you've spun the yarn if you started out a bit thicker or a bit thinner than you are towards the end that can affect it too but uh, today I think I'm going to do a double gradient so I think I'm going to keep the aquary ones towards the outside and I might blend those a wee bit together and keep the orange more to the centre so that when the blend when they apply together you're going to get some overlap of this onto the orange so I think that's what my plan is for today and then your toppings if you put toppings on you want to obviously put say some of the orange on some of the orange and some of the aqua on some of the aqua but you also want to incorporate a wee bit of the other colours from wherever they are on the bat onto their contrasting colour, base colours on the blending board as well to create interest when you spin up the fibre. So it won't just all be all green or red or yellow or whatever it is. You'll get a little wee bit of flecks of green in with your red and so on and so forth. And and bear in mind you do you want your colours to be fairly clean so that they don't um, muddy up too much as well so that's something else to take into account when you come to make your blending your, your bat and when you, when it comes to be spun so I'm just going to basically show you video what I do so you can see how I do it <laughs>
So now the toppings on the final coat, I tend to add more toppings than I did on the previous. Just extra sparkle and things like that. Try to keep, or I try to keep the colours quite distinct with the um, the bamboo and the silk so that when it's spun up you can actually see it rather than it just blurring the colours. So it'll bamboo, pull, bamboo, it'll barber pull quite nicely when you spin it if you keep the silks quite dense not so dense that you can't draft them but relatively so so I'm just going to add a wee bit of purple on the edge of the orange here that's not drafted right I'm just going to spread that out a wee bit And now I'm going to put some of this aqua colour and I'm going to put a wee bit of that just here in the orange too. And some in the turquoisey blue. And I'm going to put some of this pink silk pinky orange and I'm going to put a bit of that just here and then some in the orange as well so when the orange is spun up it's not just a block colour and a bit of that there okay what have we got left I'll put that there use that we've got some turquoise silk it's a beautiful shade of turquoise this and I'm going to add that alongside that violet I think there and I'm going to put a nice strong band of it just in this aqua at the edge and I think I'm going to do that over here too there we go, because that looks really nice in that aqua. I'm going to just put that there. There we go. Now I've got some tussar. I'm just going to put a wee bit of tussar where the turquoise base is. And I'm going to put them in quite st a strong piece there as well, I think. So it'll, it'll barber pull nicely with that turquoise it will not look like much as you put the fibers on but you wait till you take it off the board i think i said that earlier but it's true next we've got um fire star again so i'm going to put orange fire star all over the orange section and i'm going to put this on a wee bit thicker than i did in the previous layers because this is the layer you're going to see when you take when you pick up your bat or look at it or what have you and then I'm going to get this violet fire star unfortunately I don't have any turquoise fire star otherwise I would have put some of that over here but I haven't got any of that so I'm going to add some violet fire star to the violet sections. And just a wee bit of violet star, violet star, violet fire star even, to the aqua and turquoise section, but not too much because it's quite strongly coloured this. So there we go. Next, I'm going to actually brush this down. This blending body is getting really full, and it's why I don't recommend more than 50 or 60 grams of base fiber. The toppings don't weigh much, but the base fiber, it, if it gets too full, you can't blend it. So I'm just going to brush these down into the board. Here, so this is actually not sticking very well. I'll just work from bottom to top of the board, it'll be okay. 
If you do find you get too much fibre on the board, don't worry about it. Just work with it the best you can. Hold on to the fibre to brush it down. That can help too. Or just, you know, kind of pull it out, but be careful how you do it. Kind of pull it out from the top. So that's with the fire star on. Just all I need now is Neps and Angelina. So let's go in with the Neps. I'm just breeze out and blew it all over the floor. So I'll go with some of the orange Neps and I like that in amongst the aqua and turquoise. So I'm gonna put a bit there, but I'm not gonna put too much. I don't want too much. Oh, I've got a brush bristle there. That's because I've been using it several times. I just pluck it out. You probably wouldn't see it if you were using black fiber, but it's not the end of the world. I was using something like black baby alpaca. I really like black baby alpaca. It's so soft. So I'll put some of those nips in and I'm just going to put a bit on the orange because there's a slightly different shade of orange. Next, we'll go with a little bit of violet. Again, I'm not going to overload with violet, so I'm just going to put a little wee bit in the turquoise and just a few little flecks. Oops, a big fleck in the the orange. That's going to be a bit too much. There we go. Now I'm going to go with the turquoise nips, and I'm just going to put a little bit in that violet there, and the rest. That I want is going to go in the orange but again I don't want to overload and because these neps and neps they won't really blend when you come to spin it they'll stay quite distinct so they're not going to muddy up the uh, finished yarn the same way that say if you put a whole bunch of purple or blue on the orange in something like um silk might so i'm going to leave that now for those i'm just going to put the last uh the last thing which is the angelina and i will put more angelina on this layer than i did on the previous two i guess it doesn't really matter how much you put in each layer and it doesn't really matter to put more on the top layer it's just that that's the layer you're going to see and if you're going to see that one I want to be able to it's going to look super sparkly pretty but that's only for my benefit it doesn't really change the the yarn much you could put tons of Angelina in the middle and only a wee bit on the top it kind of get the same effect um, it just that it makes it look prettier when it's kind of tied up in a in a bundle but if you were selling bats which I don't uh, you probably want to make sure your outer layer is the prettiest because that's the one that your customers are going to see okay I'm using two quite thick wooden knitting needles I think these are probably around they haven't got their size on but I would say they're at least a nine possibly a ten millimeter so I'm not sure what that is in US measures so if you were making rollouts, if you wanted to make rollouts, you would do this very, very similar. You would kind of loosen up the fibre on this bottom edge, just, you know, just lift it off, off the bottom prongs. Just loosen up like that, make it all feathery. And if you were making rollouts, you would take one knitting needle, put it on the top, or the knitting needle underneath. I like to have one point at one end and one at the other. And to make roll eggs, you would kind of fold that over, lift it up and pull and drag the fibre off and twist. Drag, twist to make a roll egg, which is not what I want to do, but I'll kind of show you what I mean. So you would hold them tight, you'd turn them over, then you'd hold that tight and you would pull probably hook the board over the table like that and you would pull the fibres towards you to kind of semi-draft them in this area then you would twist and then drag and twist and drag and twist until the roll were the size that you wanted your roll to be and then you would just roll them up and if you were making roll you'd probably want to put you would want to put more 
toppings on board first before lots of dense fi uh, base fibre because all, now all you can see is the base fibre which if you're making Rolex that's all you would see but we're not making Rolex today we're making a mini bat so if you want to make Rolex make sure you put some pretties on there because this bit you're not going to see it's just going to get dragged into your Rolex but I'm making a bat but it's very similar so what I'm going to do is hold the yarn, the, 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 the knitting needles the same way but I'm going to roll but I'm not going to drag all I'm going to do is just keep rolling them I'm not pulling on them this way I'm not drafting out the fibres or any of that I'm just rolling them off the hooks on the board because if you were to pull it off the board you'd risk dragging out the fibres this is the easiest way of doing it. I'm doing it quite slow, but it actually only takes a few seconds to so just do that. Get to the top, hold on to it, roll it off the top, get rid of the board, lay that down and unroll your mini bat. You can now get rid of the knitting needles. You can lay out. And there is a mini bat done and I will show you a better close-up and then I will show you how I fold it there you go you can see all the colours and all the little nips now I'm going to fold it I'm going to grab a ribbon and show you how I fold it okay I have a ribbon I'm going to turn the bat over and what I'm going to do is the blunt edge I'm going to fold that over and then I'm going to fold it over again but a little more loosely for the second fold so it's now fold it into thirds that way like a sausage roll then I'm going to look at it and think hmm which end of the bat do I like the prettiest look of first so do I like that end, that half, or that half? And I quite like this half best. So the other end, I'm going to hold it with my thumb underneath. And I'm going to tuck that end under. And then I'm going to roll it underneath on itself. This doesn't always work first time. And I'm going to roll it like that. And when I get to this end, I'm just going to tuck those edge bits under. I'm going to get my ribbon and I'm going to turn it back over again and I'm going to just tuck that under and I'm going to tie a ribbon around it quite snugly like a wee bow and there we go and now we have a finished mini bat no, I can't guarantee mine's the same way everybody else does it because, you know, I like to just do things my own way. But there we go. That's how I make a mini bat with a blending board.